Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today we are going to be working on modeling different shapes and generally practicing our modeling. So this is level seven, I think, and it's worth checking out the previous levels because each one kind of builds on the techniques we learnt the previous time. So as normal, I'll show you the shape, you have a go at making it, I'll then show you the topology and then you can see if it matches yours and then I'll go through how I made it. Okay, so let's start off with this one. You can see my modifiers on the side as well, which may help you see how you get on with that. Okay, I'll show you the topology now. So how did I go about making this? Well, there is actually an add-on that you can use, I think, for creating bolts and things, but obviously we're here to practice. So I actually started with a cylinder, but a cylinder with a difference. So I'll come into the middle here, and my shortcut keys are down the bottom left here. I think that's from JNM. He's a great tutorial maker for Blender, so do check him out. And Shift A to add, cylinder, and I've started with eight vertices, and I've taken off the cap type. You get to this menu, so this little button here, the disclosure arrow, and I've turned the cap fill type off. Okay, so let's make the top. I'll go into edge mode with two on my keyboard. Alt left click to select that, extrude and right click. So I've got an extrusion in exactly the same place. Scale it up, extrude and constrain to the Z axis. So E then Z, scale that up. I'll get it the same height as the other one. And then I need to fill this in. Now there's a handy tool for that. If I press F3, I can find the grid fill and there's a grid fill there and it adds a nice grid. Now you'll notice it is different from this one and there's a reason for that. If we look at the base, we can see that this is nice and smooth and this is still blocky. So I wanted to keep the octagonal look at the top here, like it's a bolt, but I want the bottom bit to be smooth. So how am I going to do that? Well, I can add some loop cuts in. So one here, control R, loop cut, control R, loop cut, and I'm double clicking, double left clicking each time to insert it in the middle. So if I control R and click once, I can move it around. If I've accidentally moved it and I want it in the middle, I can right click and it will reset to the middle. Hopefully that all made sense. Now what I want to do is put this into a sphere. So I could go around grabbing each of these and then scale them out, but that's a bit awkward. There's a much easier way. I'll select the top edge loop here with Alt left click and with the loop tool add-on, right click, loop tools, circle. Now if you haven't got that add-on, you go to edit, preferences, and search for, in your add-on section, search for loop. And there is mesh loop tools. Tick that and make sure you've saved it. So auto save preferences is turned on for me. That way you'll be able to right click when you're in edit mode and have loop tools at the top here. That's really handy, fantastic add-on. So I've got the top how I want it. I just need the bottom now, alt left click, right click, loop tools, circle. You can change the influence and things down here. I have got a another video detailing all that, so I won't go into that with too much detail. Now we just need to fill the bottom. We could, of course, use an N-Gon, but that's a little bit naughty because it's not good topology. If I add an N-Gon now with F and just fill it, if I wanted to do any more loop cuts, you can see they stop at the N-Gon, so N-Gons are bad for that reason. They're not great if you want to keep modeling an object. They do have their uses, though. So we'll do the grid fill again, F3. Grid fill is already selected, so I'll choose that again. And there we go. Now you'll notice I've got blue lines around mine, and that's because I've got a bevel on it, as you can see over here. So what I wanted to do was have sort of smooth edges across the top here and where the bolt has maybe been brushed up against things. So if I go back into object mode, ah, now I didn't realize I added my object in edit mode. So I've been in edit mode all this time. So everything I've done is joined to this object. Now there's a simple way to get around that. Let's go back to edit mode. I can make sure I'm over this object and press L. And I've now selected that object, that separate object. And then you press P for separate. And then by selection, because it's selected, or you can even do loose parts in this case, but by selection, and now it's its separate object. So let's go back into object mode now. Right click, shade smooth. Now that looks horrendous. And the shade smooth does need topology in order to know where the edges are and things like that. So that's where we need this sort of bevel to give it some shape. And that's often a reason why CG stuff looks really CG and digital is because of these really sharp edges. So giving things bevels really helps, but it also helps with shade smooth and lighting normals, all sorts of things like that. So getting used to bevels is really important. 
On this one over here, if I, if I go into edit mode, you can see the blue lines. And the reason I've got blue lines is to tell Blender where I want my bevel happening. So if I go to my other object and add a bevel this time, oh, it has actually got one on. I'll just remove that bevel for the moment and show you where it is. Add modifier bevel. Now all the edges are beveled. That's its default. It just finds an edge and bevels it, which actually has helped our smooth shading. It doesn't look too bad, but you can see it's going a bit distorted here and I don't want it to because it's beveling these edges that are in here. It's beveling everything, but this is quite flat. So you can't really see the bevel, but it's not quite working. I need to define which edges I need beveled. So let's select the edges we want with Alt Shift, left click, go around here, underneath here, and this one as well. Because they were started as a cube, you have to go all the way around because there's poles on the edge here. And poles are anything that hasn't got four edges going into it. So three or five and above. We call those poles. Anyway, in order to get the bevel working, let's go to item and there's the mean bevel weight. We're looking at edge data at the moment. So mean bevel weight for the edge data. And I'll put that up to one for now. And I need to change the limit method to weight. And then it's looking at this bevel weight. And you can see it's now, if I turn back into object mode, it's finding those edges where I've marked them. We can put the segments up to make it a bit sharper. I could probably do with a bevel in here as well, actually. So let's go into there, select that one and watch what happens as I pull up the bevel. Can you see that? The mean bevel weight and it changes that shading as well because it adds topology in there and now Blender can work out how to shade it properly. So there we go. There's the bevel tool. Now the difference between the two of these is that this one has three segments and this one has two and you can really see the difference in the shading. So let's put this one up and it looks a bit better and we can always put the width down if we need to. But what I haven't done is beveled these markers down here. So if I go in and select each of those with shift, just going around the outside quickly, I could have possibly used the select similar command but time's moving on, so we'll just quickly do that and increase the bevel weight and it should end up looking like the other one. Indeed it does. Okay, so that was the first shape. The next shape, if I use the new collections up here, I have a cube, but the cube is slightly different if we take a closer look. I think I'll put this in look dev up at the top here so you can see it a bit easier. So you can see what's going on a bit more, maybe. <laughs> and pause the video and have a go at that. Okay, I'll show you my topology. It is a little bit tricky to see, so this might help you just to see the shape. Okay, so how did I make this? Now, at first glance, it looks fairly straightforward, but there are some things that can catch you out with this one, and that's why it's in here. So this time I go into object mode to add my new cube. I'll grab and pull this one away, and shift A and add a cube. So into edit mode. I'm going to go back to solid mode, so I think that'll be easier to see. Control R loop cut across there, control R, loop cut across there, and control R to loop cut across there. Now that's a slow way of doing it. What I could have done is with everything selected, right click and subdivide. And then it automatically does it because it cuts every quad into four. And that's what the subdivision surface is doing when you add it in the modifiers. So the first thing I've got is this sort of dig in around here. So if I select this loop and this loop, and what I'm going to do is bevel them. So control B, to bevel and that creates that shape that I can then inset. Now you might be thinking extrude, right click and scale and that does work. It's just a touch awkward because if I go to top view, it's scaling in really slightly into the middle and that's not actually what I want. If I want this to line up exactly, it's not working for me. Now a better tool for this, in my opinion, if I undo that twice, that's a common mistake actually undoing an extrusion, but not completely undoing it. And then you've got lots of doubles around the place. But anyway, I'm going to inset with I. So inset with I, and I can inset it like this. But if I just left click and leave it there, I've got my inset faces options here, which is quite nice. And there's a depth option. So I'm going to go in here, but there's also a thickness, which I can leave it nice and square. So it's a good idea to have a bit of a play with this. It is different from the extrusion tool 
and it can really help you when you're trying to line things up. So the other thing I did, I did the middle line. So Alt right click, Control B to bevel to make it into this sort of faces like this. And then I use the inset again, I just left click and then change the thickness and things here. So let's look at the depth again. I can go outwards just like the extrude tool. Watch out though, can you see I'm overlapping when I get to this point? So don't do that. You should never have overlapping topology. So coming back in and somewhere around here and I've got my shape. So that's the inset tool and how you can use it to align your extrusions. Then what you can try is using the bevel and subdivision tool. So see if you can have a go at getting to a nice sort of smooth beveled edged weird boxy thing. I'm not going to show you how to do that. Hopefully you should understand that from what I've done earlier. But if I just go into edit mode, you can see that everything has a blue line. So that should help you. You don't actually need to turn the weight on just to have your bevel set to none. And it's just a matter of playing around with the width and the segments at that point, because every edge in this case needs to be beveled for it to work like this. I always like to mark mine so I have that control if I ever need to. Okay, so I hope that helps you. These videos are proving to be quite popular and lots of people are asked for more, so uh, there'll be more on the way. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.